Welcome back viewers. Today we will be testing the ATR breakout indicator. But before we do, if you have not watched our first video and the videos after that, you need to go do that now. At the Academy of Forex, we are building the best trading system possible as a team. And as a team, we will all profit from it when we are done. You can find a link to the first video down below. You can also find a link to sign up for TradingView down below. If you use the link below, you will save a little bit of money. You can also find a link below to join us on Discord. Discord is a free group communication platform. On our Discord server, we are having great conversations about all things regarding trading. One of the biggest struggles on this channel is people who use other platforms like MT4 being able to follow along. Sometimes it can be hard to find the indicators we are using on other platforms. And so on our Discord server, I have created a channel for indicator creation. And on that channel, I pinned links to freelancers who can code indicators for MT or for TradingView. So if you don't want to create a TradingView account, you can hire a freelancer for a really small fee and have them code an indicator for the MT platform. Or if you are on TradingView and need an indicator created, something unique or an indicator for a system you have developed, you can also have them code PineScript. So use the link for either MT4 coding or use the link for PineScript. Lastly, I get a lot of people that are asking me for the entire list of all the winning indicators that we have tested to date. And uh, whereas I am not a big uh, proponent of gatekeeping information, I've put a lot of time and effort into creating the content on my YouTube channel. And so I don't think it is too much to ask for the viewers to go through and view the content that I've spent a lot of time uh, creating. Now, if you are not interested in supporting our channel by going back and watching the content that I have created, then I have uh, developed a solution for you. I've created a Patreon account I will put a link to it down below in the description. If you sign up for Patreon and you sign up for the $9 a month account, I will send you the full list of tested and winning indicators to date. I will also send you an updated list of the indicators that we are testing at the end of each week. Now, of course, you have to stay subscribed to the $9 uh, subscription, monthly subscription, to continue to receive the updated list of indicators. But that way, it will provide me with the support that I need to continue to provide the free uh, content that I am putting out for everybody to view. Now, if you just love the channel in general and want to support us, then there is also a lower, uh, I think, $3 Patreon subscription that you can sign up for that will also help support the channel and keep things going so that way I can continue to produce the content and the open information that we are creating here in this channel and in our Discord server. Again, if you have not signed up for our Discord, then you need to do that as well. It is a absolutely free platform where we have real-time ability to chat and have conversations about trading. And again, if you want to support the channel with Patreon, then you can find the link down below in the description. All right, as I said, today we will be testing the ATR breakout indicator. 
But before we do, I wanted to put the indicator scoreboard up for everyone to see. So to date, we have tested 163 indicators. And out of those 163 indicators, 65 of them have been winners, which means that they have met or exceeded the 60% win-loss ratio threshold that we have set for them. The best ones so far were able to achieve a 100% win rate. Now you need to go back and watch those videos to understand the context of how they were able to achieve that. But as we are working on building the best trading system possible, you could take any one of those 65 indicators and get out there and start potentially profitably trading the markets with them now. So go back and watch those videos, make a list of those indicators, and get out there and see what you can do with them. But stick with us here as we work on maximizing your trading profits. All right, so today's indicator is the ATR breakout indicator. It is a TradingView member created indicator. And so of course you can find a link to it down below in the description. Uh, basically what this indicator is doing, you can see it here on the bottom of the screen. And you can also see that it is uh, painting the bars of the price action as well. And so what it's doing is it is uh, monitoring measuring the ATR, and it is um, looking for candles that exceed the ATR um, calculation. And when it gets a candle that exceeds, whether it is a, uh, a red candle or a green candle, it will then uh, paint them a specific color. And so you can see uh, that the red candles are red and you can see that the green candles are yellow. And then anything else beyond that is just the gray and light blue colored candles. And so uh, very interesting, uh, very interesting indicator to say the least. Uh, it is, uh, it's, it's using uh, momentum it's using the um, the historical uh, ATR the historical movement of the particular pair to gauge whether or not a specific candle uh, has that authority that momentum behind it to really validate uh, entering a trade and so I think it is a, a fascinating indicator to say the least. Haven't played with it at all yet. And so I am curious to see how well it will do when we put it to test. And so basically what we are going to do is we are going to look for red candles for sell. And I am actually going to go in uh, like I normally do. And I am going to make a few changes here. I want those to be green for buying. Actually, I take that back. I want to keep those. I want to keep those yellow. I actually want to change these cells. Orange. Is orange a good color? Purple. Let's stick to orange. Actually, there is this bright purple here. Let's do that. Yeah, let's let's do that. Um, candle. Let's see. Bar color. And then is that? Ah, 
that doesn't look like you can doesn't look like you can turn those off interesting well okay guess we'll bump these back up Actually, I'm going to turn that off. Let's do that. I'm just not, uh, sorry, I'm just not fond of having um, the price action itself uh, colored completely out like that. I mean, I don't mind one or two bars just to give me, um, you know, a signal. Obviously, a purple would have been a, a cell, a red bar. A yellow would have been a buy, a um, green bar, and so that's fine. But it didn't give me the ability to shut it off on the rest of the candles, and I find it a little annoying and a little distracting, especially whenever I'm trying to keep an eye on price action. And so, yeah, basically what we're looking for is we're going to keep an eye on the bars then down here at the bottom. So when we get a... Um, Capacity all the way up. Yes, yes. And we can go ahead and turn these down because we really don't need them. Just looking for those specific bars. There we go. And so that's that's how we'll set it up. And so we will um, we'll have it like that, and we can even. Now go ahead and change these since they're not uh, intertwined with the bars. There we go. All right. I know. Sorry that uh, took a little bit. So let's see here. Last thing we're going to do is um, we've talked about this a few times. So we're going to we're going to keep an eye on support and resistance level market structure so some people uh, refer to it as market structure as well and so which is uh, which is fine I mean that's you know there's there's definitely names for uh, for you know many different things when we are uh, there there's different names for things when we are uh, trying to identify uh, you know different aspects of trading different aspects of of how things are described and so some people will call it one thing some people will call it another thing some people call it support and resistance some people call it market structure and so it can be called uh, either or and basically what we're looking for is uh, we're just looking to identify areas of potential support and resistance. And so we can do that by, again, we can go in and we can draw out uh, like we have in the past, where we would go out and we would uh, take lines like this. We'd start at the very top. So we'd scroll back a good ways. We'd start at the very top of uh, price action. We'd mark it off. We'd start at the very bottom. We would mark it off. And then we would just keep working our way down the uh, kind of these major peaks and valleys as we are identifying, you know, kind of areas of structure. And so that's really no different. Uh, I mean, we, we can do that or we can base it off of Fibonacci levels, which often uh, coincide with these levels uh, rather well. And so we could take a Fibonacci level, for example, and we could draw it from here to here. And then we could uh, go in and then mark off these areas like this.
And if you wanted, what you could do is you could make the the Fibonacci uh, the Fibonacci levels one color. And so I could go through and say make all these uh, a black. Then I could delete my Fibonacci retracement. And then I could look for any areas of support and resistance that it might have missed and I could then go in and uh, put those in a different color and grade those support and resistance areas uh, based off of that and so say Fibonacci uh, retracement levels are you know have a higher authority and then the next level down would be just areas of support and resistance that I identified myself, which might have a, um, you know, a, a lower authority, we could say. And then once you do that, once you mark out these areas, then you have a grid of, of market structure. And at that point, you have these areas of support and resistance that you can keep an eye on as you are identifying trade opportunities. And that is how you would, that's how you would go about developing uh, market structure, the easiest way to do it. And of course, keep in mind that the farther you have to go back, the less valid market structure becomes. And so you want market structure to be identified in, uh, you know, the closest. So we would, you know, kind of identify areas back here. But we had this really big drop back here in 2016. And so it really kind of um, messed up the structure of the market. And so it's a, it's a little bit uh, hard to get a real clear idea of market structure just by looking at this little area right here. And so basically just scrolling back and keeping an eye on what market structure did historically. And then you can map those areas out. And then now what we have is a, a, uh, a whole bunch of lines that are mapping out market structure, support and resistance areas. And we know that the black lines are Fibonacci levels based off of um, a really big move in the past. And that the blue lines are just uh, areas, peaks and valleys of you know historical price action as well and then uh, once you have that set up basically what you're looking for is you're looking for um, conditions to occur at those areas of support and resistance so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, start the testing process of our indicator again we're looking for the red bars to spike for shorts, green bars to spike for longs. And then in the meantime, we will just kind of keep an eye on price action and see what price action is, is kind of up to. And so here's a, a good example. And so uh, price action uh, rolled over, it came down, came almost to this line right here. Keep in mind that these lines are not exact lines where price action has to touch it's just zones areas of opportunity and so it could be a little less it can be a little more you just kind of have to gauge what price action is doing once it gets relatively close to those areas and then uh what you would like to see is that your indicator is also confirming uh what you the what price action is doing when it gets to those areas or um, maybe not confirming but it is giving you a better idea of what price action might do 
as it gets to that area and is reacting. And so here is a good example where it pushed down. And then our indicator spiked right here, a big green bar right as this big uh, green candle took place. And so in this case, we had a relatively decent push down. Not huge, but it was a push down nonetheless. So it pushed down, came right down into this area of support and resistance. In this case, it would have been uh, support. And then it bounced off of it with a really big green candle and painted a green bar on our indicator. All things pointing to a long move taking place. Let's go ahead and play it out and see what happens. And as you see, boom, 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 it definitely took off there for a decent little amount of time and would have definitely got us to take profit. That would have been a good little trade. And so we had a, uh, a confluence of things all taking place at one time, giving us an idea of what price action may do and where price action may be heading. And so that is the power of market structure and layering that with the ability to uh, read what price action is doing with the indicators that you might be using. And so here we get an instance where uh, we uh, get a push up to this area of resistance, overhead resistance, and a pretty strong red bar pushing down that then painted here on the indicator telling us to go short uh, but the problem is that this move was not a very big move this this was not a great move here and so part of setting conditions is that you have to develop the ability to um, have a set of rules to go in and out of trades and in this particular case i would not have taken this trade because uh, part of the rules that I rely on is that a large move in one direction or another has to take place. And this was not a large move. This was just a pullback from uh, this this bigger downward push here, pull back up into this area. Then it tried to push down, but price action is really uncertain as to what it wants to do. So it pushed down for a second, but then unfortunately, almost immediately, gave us another long signal over here. So this one would have been invalidated. We would have we would have lost that one. And we would have taken the long here. Again, that would not have been a long that I would have taken because I don't agree with the conditions that are currently being met. And as you see, it just chopped to the side for the longest time. Let's see, we were on this one right here. Let's go ahead and measure it out and see. Yeah, we would have gotten stopped out on that one there. Then over here, it eventually gave us another green candle Again, I do not agree with all the conditions um, as a full system that this would have been a, a really um, kind of no-brainer trade. This definitely would have, would have worried me as far as what price action was doing leading up to this. But it did get us to take profit. And so, um, you know, just because the, all the conditions wasn't met doesn't mean that it can't get to your take profit. It just means that it is unlikely. It has less of an less of a chance. Well, that was a really good spike right there. We lost. This would have been losing trade. Then we get this massive green spike here. That would have done good. Nope. Not blue. We're looking for green. 
All right, moving along. Now, this is one of those instances where price action has pushed up significantly. Now, this is the point where um, I would start to get interested in what is happening uh, with this particular pair. So price action has pushed up rather significantly. It's running into an area of support and resistance. In this case, it's overhead resistance. It's rolling over. You can see it just slowly rolling over in, uh, uh, in its move. And it's uh, pinning these bars to the upside. And so all those would um, really lead me to believe that this move is starting to weaken and we could see a downward correction in this move in the very near future. Now there's no confirmation from the indicator yet and so I would just sit on my hands, not really do anything. And there's the confirmation from the indicator. Unfortunately, by the time that it did give us the signal, the majority of that move had already been made. And so ideally, I would have been in up here and rode this down to this area down here. And so um, I can already spot that there's a little bit of an efficiency or inefficiency, I should say, in the way this indicator works. It's, it's not giving us... Um, you know, it has to be a, a really massive bar to give us a signal to go down or up to, to enter in any direction. Let's see. So that would have been a losing trade. And then over here gives us another spike to the downside and that one worked out. And I mean, just uh, keep an eye on what price action is doing at these areas that we've mapped out on our chart. I mean, we mapped these out from historical price action that took place in some instances years back, in some instances just rather recently. Uh, but you can see here that price action keeps having reactions to these areas and so that's the power of market structure being able to identify these areas of support and resistance let's go ahead and just keep playing it out mark this one as a green or uh mark that one as a red when it was supposed to be a green there we go That one would have gotten us to take profit as well. Picked up this red over here, but we would have still been, um, we would have still been in the trade from this one over here. So we're going to ignore that one. Um, it looks like it would have led to a winning trade, but. It wouldn't have been logical if we were already in a trade to then re-enter another trade. This video is getting a little long, so I'm going to try to just bang out the rest of the signals. Not worry much about what price action is doing. Try not to make the videos that long. Let's 
So far, the indicator seems to be doing rather well. Not bad. I mean, it definitely has its inefficiencies. I mean, they, you know, that's it's kind of the nature nature of indicators. They're they're not going to be perfect. The question is, are they good enough? Are they good enough to move on to the next step of the process? And if they are, are they good enough to uh, possibly uh, filter out some what would be some losing trades uh, are they good enough to confirm you know are, are they good enough to just be you know put into the system in general to uh, to help us really maximize our trading ability and our profit that's what that's what we're looking for so Close to the end of the year now. Go ahead and play this out. Got one more signal to look at. And unfortunately, it would have been losing signal. All right, there we go. So that's what we're looking at as far as the ATR goes, the ATR breakout. Let's clear some of these support and resistance lines out of here. Definitely was not all of them. Just so that way we can see a little bit clearer. There we go. All right. So let's count them out and see what we got. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. So we have 23 signals all together. And we have, uh, let's see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. And man, it barely squeezed past that 60% marker uh, just by a hair. And so, uh, yeah, all in all, not a bad indicator. Very interesting. Uh, works around the ATR, which I have full confidence in the ATR's ability. Uh, does it work perfectly around the ATR and the way it operates? Mm, I don't think it works perfectly, but it works good enough. For us to at least put it to a little bit better testing and uh and yeah try to uh you know mix it in with a trading system see what we can see what we can do with this thing and so for now it will go on the yes list and we'll move on to the next indicator from here if you have not already like this video comment below subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification so that way you are notified anytime i post a new video as part of the team it's important that you are seeing the new videos as they come out so you know what it is that we are discussing and what indicators we are testing have tested and have not tested also, like usual, there is a link below in the description to the Discord server. You can join us on Discord so that way we can further discuss the indicators and have discussions as we move forward building our trading system. And lastly, like usual, there is a link below to TradingView. If you like what you see whenever I use TradingView and you are interested in signing up, for TradingView. If you use the link below and sign up for a paid account, 
you will save a little bit of money. So, alright everybody, I will see you on the next video.